Well, I've got the two Super Bowl champs with me on today's program, and the Giants certainly at some point would like to get back there. John Mara and Dave Gettleman had a press conference uh, just within the last 45 minutes to discuss the state of the team uh, with the media. And basically, uh, to no one's surprise, they're not putting any specific numbers on how many games the Giants have to win to deem this season a success. Rather, they're simply talking about the process, the system. Um, They pretty much both agree that the team has to win more games than it did last season. (laughs) But nobody is putting any mandate on a playoff appearance. Again, just wanting to see progress. If you're asking me just see progress, I think that uh, it's very hard for people uh, on the outside world to, to look at football the way I look at football. If you don't have your starters in preseason games playing, you it's hard to gauge what you're doing. I understand what Coach Judge is doing. Coach Judge is trying to evaluate players to get his team together. But as far as the fans go and people on the outside looking in, they don't care about that. All they care about is victories, preseason victories, victories in – and, and drafts and victories and, and free agency victories in, in the playoffs. So they can't see – the. I understand the process and everything, but I don't think people on the outside do. And I think it's very funny when people get so worked up about it. Uh, it it'll be it, – it, back in the day – and I keep saying back in the day, I sound like a thousand-year-old guy, but back in the day, Jeff can attest to this, no one would let you get on the field, even in a preseason game, because we were afraid that the guy behind us was going to get a job. <laughs> so n- nowadays it's like – we don't want anybody to get hurt. We got to make sure they're going to be okay. We got to take care of them, which is kind of a uh, what, what term would that be? When you're trying to make sure that people are going to be okay playing football before they actually have to play football. Um, Cautious. Silly. Cautious is the word you. I would call it more silly, mm. because if you're doing a preseason game, it's football. If you're doing a regular season game, I think it's still football. And I still think still sixty minutes. Yeah, and I think I think the whole fantasy football world has driven the football football world a little crazy i'd play everybody i'd get my reps in i'd get everybody ready to go but that that will be my way of looking at it my way of doing it jeff one of the things that dave gettleman said when he was asked specifically about well you know what did you see on saturday and what do you think about the progress of this team during training camp he reiterated what joe judge had said the giants played a ton of their backups they played it as if it was their fourth preseason game and all of us know if you've been watching any football for the last decade or so The fourth preseason game is full of a lot of guys who probably won't make the team. They're guys who are undergoing evaluation. And it's ridiculous to think that you know anything about what this starting unit is going to be on both sides of the ball when you didn't really see a whole lot of them. Well, what's what's funny about the the, talking about the fourth preseason game and the and the alike of the first one this year (laughs) is that. The first preseason game is the first preseason game. And by the way, it's not the fourth one because the first one, you got to figure out everything. There's all new players. There's new coaches. There's a lot of different things that you have to go into the first preseason game. And, and Howard, you know this, uh, how we come out on the field, how we line up for pre for pregame, warm-ups, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So that's the newness of the first preseason game. But treating it like the fourth preseason game, there's a lot of you know similarities to that game that they played Saturday night, knowing that, when all three of us sit down here, we probably can come up with 48 of the 53 guys immediately. <laughs> and so they're really the fourth preseason game, hence the first preseason game, is about five or six players. And the other part about it is it's a lot of it is just to get some of the, the veterans who got in the game just a little bit of a transition, come out of the tunnel, go to pregame, go back in, sweat, it, get the sweat going a little bit, then cool off, come back on the field, play a couple series, and then you're done, put your hat on, and, you know, eat a hot dog. You can't do that anymore. Guys used to eat hot dogs on the sideline. Me and Howard <laughs> did, right? <laughs> you can't do that anymore. But my point is, is this, it, it is important to the guys, and we knew going into the game after hearing Coach Judge tell us in that production meeting, mm-hmm. is that these are the guys you guys need to look at. And there was about a handful of them, right? And those guys went out there and played, and, and some of them did good. I mean, you go back there and look at uh, Matt Cole, was the one, a guy that he mentioned yep. that we didn't know much about. He made some good plays. Um, and some other guys that we can go down the list and see. So that's the difference, guys. Even though it's the first, treated like a fourth, there is some similarities to it, but it is still the first preseason game. And now jumping into this week and the following week with these joint practices, I think – the Giants coaching staff and the scouting department and the organization are going to get so much, so much work out of these next two weeks that that's really when the roster is going to kind of take take place and kind of mold itself. 
but I think there's one thing there that we all have to look at. We got to be, we got to practice, and we got to practice good, and we got to practice carefully. That's the big thing. Carefully. Well, Dave Gettleman <laughs> did say yeah. that he believes that there'll be a lot more movement after the second preseason game, Makes and sense. he also said he believes he'll have some more concrete decisions on some of the roster spots after the week of practice in Cleveland and the game against the Browns. Now, the Giants had to make some moves today. Uh, they released a running back Alfred Morris and safety Chris Milton and placed cornerback uh, Jaron Williams on injured reserve with a quad injury. Now, that gets them down to 85, which is the max they had to have by 4 o'clock. Uh, they will be able to get down to uh, 80 after the Browns game. So five more bodies are going to have to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, after this week, and then the final cut, as we all know, on August 31st, goes all the way down to 53. But but Dave was very emphatic in saying that they they like the offensive linemen that they have now, the starting five. They only had four of the starters play the other night because Lemieux was being rested, still coming off the knee injury. Mm-hmm. And that um, they're on the lookout. He, he did admit they are on the lookout for potential offensive linemen picks up, pickups but insisting that there will be probably more available in terms of quality and quantity next week. I think it, I think a lot of this is, is based upon uh, the need to know, not need to know, the, the, the veracity of, of information that people are asking for constantly uh, from everything from beat writers to like the NFL Network to ESPN guys standing all standing outside the post asking what are you going to do, 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 and having to come up with an answer you know, day in and day out, when the reality of it is that you're trying to make your team better. Uh, that's not a long enough answer for anyone when you when you answer that way. But that's really the the, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. I think that you know, if you can get all five guys healthy enough to play, then you start to see them. That's what I meant by you know having guys play during preseason. Uh, the first game being the fourth game is really in the fourth game. You got you know, like Jeff said, five or six guys that are trying to make the team, and the coach is like, hey, look. Here is your opportunity. I'm going to give you some special plays. I'm going to give you some um, real offense, live offense, live defense. Show me what you got. This is your last, you know, this is your your opportunity. And, and unfortunately, guys have to, like, move on. Uh, this next week, uh, you'll have live practices uh, in Cleveland. Um, not really live practices, but practices against other, another team in Cleveland. That will give you an opportunity to, you know, to evaluate some guys. But it will also give you an opportunity to get your starters more reps together. Against well, other guys, which is important. Let me just I, – I got on the offensive line. So, let on a timeline, when we talk about the next three weeks, okay, we've got the joint practices this week, the joint practices next week, and then you've got the two weeks before the regular season starts. So, this is probably at the juncture now where you could probably – you can bring in guys now and they can pick up a system, if you will, in, in four weeks. So, I think you still have a little bit of time. The problem is that I would show – throw caution to the wind a little bit is that there's going to be some movement amongst the league in the next week or so after that second preseason game but let's all let's all just be smart about this the guys that are going to be getting released are getting released for a reason okay so they're not still on a team so let's not think that they're you know they're they're coming in here to be the starters of this football team this is a depth issue and I feel like you still have time to develop some of these guys and when I mean develop I mean get them indoctrinated to the system that the Giants are running so that they'll have enough of an idea if they had to fill in if somebody got hurt they'll be okay now the other thing is too is the expanded again the the practice squad where you can have veterans on that practice squad and we know about the the movement of the offensive line on game Mm -hmm. day so there's a lot of things here that I think this is important to look at going forward with the offensive line and how many guys they're going to go out and get or how many of the guys are just not happy with that are the backups on the team now. Well, Jeff, to your point about the offensive line, John Mara was a little more specific than Dave Gettleman was. He said he felt good about the five starters and he felt good about two of the backups. He would not name the backups. I would assume Harrison and Solder would be the two backups that he feels the best about. Although Harrison hasn't had to do a lot during training camp because, again, he's also coming off of a bit of a gimpy situation. So he's been rather limited. But he's got a lot of uh, experience in this league at guard and at center. And I think they probably feel pretty solid with him as a swing guy on the inside. And I know they feel good about Solder as the third tackle. I mean, let's face it, Joe Judge has just been singing Solder's praises ever since training camp started Mm -hmm. about how well he's doing refreshed 
after having the opt-out season. So I would assume those are the two reserves they're talking about. But we all know the Giants will keep probably nine, maybe ten offensive linemen on the 53. Uh, probably nine, I would think. It, but ten is not out of the question. They usually have five guys. One guy that can play tackle, one guy that can, and, and one guy that plays guard and, and center uh, as the two backups. Uh, if, if another guy goes down, then they start to get stressed. Maybe they they have eight traveling, but then that kind of breaks into your special teams and stuff. That's that's usually the process. As far as uh, picking up guys and Jeff saying that there may not be a guy that's coming in to be a starter, there'll be guys that will be let go that were starters, or they don't they don't they they lost a competition to mm-hmm. a younger player that is a cheaper player, mm-hmm. and that's going to be those those will be the guys that business decisions out. Right well, now. those will be the guys that you're looking for and that's hoping. Right. That'll be out there, and that you know you're not always going to get get those guys. Those guys get gobbled. Well, up you're not quickly. because they have to go through waivers, so yeah. you may not be you may not have a chance to get one of those guys. That's true. Well, the older guys don't, Jeb. That that's the thing. They they get they get to be free well, agents. I get, I get that, but if there's a younger guy that they're kind of oh you know, younger hot guys no for, younger yeah, guys so, under yeah. under under four years have to go through waivers. So, older yeah. guys yeah. are just free agents. So and it, we know that these that you know the organization has every one of these guys you know scouted and ranked and no have you ever been into into Kenny Stein, uh, Sternfeld's office and look on his wall. It's it's a, it's you marvel at what's going on there. It's yeah. like, wow. <laughs> uh, our phone number incredible. here, folks, we want you to participate in today's program. Uh, 201-939-4513. 201-939-4513 here on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Jeff, we need to tap into your expertise, although I, I know it's been a while since you've played. You can call it that. But the Giants did make a deal <laughs> yesterday and it seems to me it has special teams all oh, look, over it. Absolutely. When cornerback Keon Crossan arrived in a trade with the Houston Texans, they deal a 2023 sixth-round draft choice to pick up this backup defensive back who played his rookie season in New England in 2018 when Joe Judge was one of the assistants in New England. And Dave Gettleman said himself that he drew great grades, very high grades from Joe Judge. Judge obviously recommending that they go get him. Uh, And so the deal has been made. Gettleman also, by the way, saying he's not anxious to trade any 2022 draft choices. He has 10 of those. Mm -hmm. Did not want to deal them. So he dealt a 2023 six-rounder to pick up Crossan. Gettleman said it's a bonus, you know, that that he's got some cornerback snaps in his background. But the idea here for Crossan is that he is a special teams demon who was being brought in last year. He had 12 total tackles on special teams, which was tied for sixth most in the National Football League. Well, hey, listen, we all understand that they're, you know, this kind of, you, you, you don't know if Nate Ebner is going to be back. Um, he's obviously their special teams demon from the past, uh, up in New England and last year until, um, you know, and he also could play different positions. Uh, Keon Crawford is a guy that, I think that is well known with Joe Judge. That's in, by the way, period. That's mm-hmm. all you have to understand. Yep. Okay, the guy coached him. Well, he trusted him. him, and he knows him. And and by the way, he understands that the positions that he can play. We call it the core four. He will be on those. Um, I don't know if he has any returning experience. I don't think he does. Um, but the fact is, is that when I look at the game last uh, Saturday night, I saw some guys playing special teams that haven't played positions before. And so it's interesting to me that the, that Joe Judge and, and McGahee and Tom Quinn are, are trying these guys out at different positions. Um, you know, you got guys running down. Cam Brown is running down as a gunner <laughs> on the punt team, which yep. is fine with me because he's got the size, he's a tackler, um, he's aggressive, and he's got some speed. So, you know, it's important that the other guys on the roster understand what just happened. Keon Crawford was brought in here to play special teams, so that means it's just going to be even harder for some of these back-end roster guys to make the team because I have a feeling that Keon Crawford's probably going to make the team now if they brought him in like this because they traded him for a draft pick. Oh, well, yeah, they got capital invested in him. Mm-hmm. They're not going to cut the guy. Well, yep. uh, well, beyond him making the team, I think when he comes in, he comes in with the attitude, okay, I know who Joe Judge is. Mm-hmm. I, I worked for him before. I know his mentality. I, you know, I flourished in his system before. Now I get to you know work at him as, as a head coach, work with him as a head coach, and guys are going to see that. So if you're a back end guy and you're like, I hope I make it, and this guy shows up, you're like, okay, I got to step it up because now if I was a second or third consideration, now I'm third or fourth consideration. Yep. I got to figure out how to get myself and, and quickly <laughs> and and watch and see what he's doing. Like, okay, if yep. this guy's doing this, then I need to do this. It's it's going to be 
it's going to you know raise the level of some of these special teams guys that are, or some of these uh, lower tier guys that are trying to make the team. Well, Paul, he was, is, uh, is he a is he a slot corner outside? What does he play? No, you know what? I haven't looked at any of his defensive tape, okay. so I don't know. What I can tell you is this: when he was at Western Carolina, he was a track star. Uh, that's from the uh, Southern Conference, and he was a speed sprinter uh, in, in track. Mm-hmm. So you know, obviously, he has some athleticism. There's no question about that. Uh, and speed is a big component of special teams. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, going, getting down to cover, getting down to cover, especially the Gunners, it, it really helps out a lot. Mm-hmm. And also defending the Gunners. Yeah. You know, so and a cornerback is a natural position at that, as we can imagine. Mm-hmm. And so if you have some good speed, because by the way, you know, speed. There's there's linear speed. There's all kinds of different speed levels, and we know mm-hmm. this, Howard. There's guys that you know. There's in this game, you get beat every single day. But the guys that are quick and fast and and have that acceleration can get back into position, you know. And Keon Crawford might be one of those guys that has that kind of a speed that if he does get beat, he can get back in and still make a play. He got their makeup speed. Did yeah, not make have, up speed. That's the, that's the word yeah. I was looking at. Make up speed. Yep. He, he does not have any return experience okay. in the NFL. Uh, yeah, that I much I've been able to speed, check. By so. The way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I could barely run on the field. <laughs> let's, let's, that's how fast I was. Let's just say, Jeff, if you had to make a tackle on specials, that's a problem. Uh, don't rely. No, that means they couldn't ran, rely. That means me. they ran right at him. Hey, listen, the, the bet, you know who my best friend was? The sideline. That's my best friend. <laughs> exactly. To just get him to the sideline and force just push him, him out of bounds. That's yeah, it. You don't have to make a tackle that way, even though I got it credit for the tackle to force him out of bounds. <laughs>